Oh yeah, we're back with another Tucson, and this one is quite a bit more recent than the last couple that I had taken a look at. This is a TS-369. It's a Jelly Jerry design. And, uh, well, this one has um, purple anodization going on for the, uh, the titanium, uh, including the, uh, the backspacer and the pocket clip there. But uh, I do think that they had a couple other uh, colors for them. Most likely green and uh, maybe a standard uh, sandblast, so unanodized finish. I don't quite remember. But either way, it was purple, and uh, that's what this dude likes. So uh, I went with the purple. So there we go. This guy has some thumb studs on him and uh, also has a uh, front flipper, which ends up working out pretty darn well. This is a uh, definitely a drop point blade, but uh, has kind of an interesting curvature up here towards the top that uh, keeps it just a little bit taller. We got a really, really high flat grind. Not full flat because we do have that uh, that little uh, curvature edge there with the, uh, the swedge, but still very, very nice thin blade geometry going on. Which is good because this thing has their uh, standard blade stock thickness of uh, 3.8 going on there. Um, the uh, the thumb studs are um, not bespoke to this model. Um, as we had uh, taken a look at last week with the uh, TS-316, same thumb studs going on there. Uh, but in this particular case, because the handles scales uh, on this thing are uh, quite a bit thinner, um, and they also stick out quite a bit uh, from the uh, scales when it's closed, because of how tall they are, I've actually gotten these caught uh, when I'm pulling my knife out of the pocket and half waving uh, the blade open. It wouldn't fully open it up, but enough for me to um, have the knife open when I wasn't expecting it to be. So um, that is uh, something that might be just a little bit concerning. Um, it would be kind of interesting to do a bit of a mod on that. Of uh, We do have a, a decent chunk of uh, flat area there that we could probably um, take the thumb studs out and try to uh, cut in some sort of a hole deployment or something like that there. Um, that is going to take uh, quite a bit of um, work because, yeah, this is hardened D2 steel, um, so it's not going to be super trivial to be able to do that. But I suppose that would be an option in case, um, you know, those some studs um, really bother you, kind of the way that uh, they, they were me with uh, snagging on my uh, pants when I was kind of opening them up. And you're not happy with just having the um, the front flipper there, which works out fantastically, by the way. So, yeah, like I said earlier, Jelly Jerry design. And this one, uh, I think, is absolutely fantastic. Blade geometry is great. I do like that uh, nice drop point blade. The uh, the tip is just a little tiny bit below the um, the center mark or right at it. Basically what you want out of a, uh, a nice drop point there. Um, pretty darn neutral as far as the, uh, the handle is concerned. Great, great jimping going on here. Or crenellations, they're, they're pretty large, but, um, man, they work out super, super great. And you can choke up in case that's something that you also want to do. Plunge grind is, you know, it's fairly gradual, but it does basically end right before the edge starts. So, um, I mean, if the, uh, the plunge grind, um, Ended up starting and finishing uh, much more um, much more abruptly. That would probably be better. But because this blade does reach out uh, further than uh, where that plunge grind ends, it's not the absolute end of the world there. Uh, something also to mention here. We got uh, green micarta. And this is uh, some of their newer canvas style micarta. Um, in case... Um, you're a little bit more familiar with a uh, micarta that looks like uh, this from Tucson. And this one, what is this, the 132? Yeah, TS-132. Uh, pretty old school one. Um, they they ended up calling this linen micarta, but it was definitely like burlap kind of a crap tier micarta, which is why I've ended up calling it micarta before. This one in particular, I ended up um, 
sanding it down and re-oiling to uh, try to get a, a better texture and finish on there. And I did. Um, still, it's got the, uh, the old stamped clip, which um, really prevents me from uh, holding on to these guys. But this thing has been um, reissued. Uh, I don't know if it has the uh, the same kind of a blah micarta as the originals do, but I'm pretty darn sure that they don't have that stamped clip. Um, they will have um, Y start um, kind of printed somewhere on the blade because this knife was technically a collaboration with them, but they weren't uh, accredited with it on these uh, on these first runs. But the newer ones that are uh, still available do. So there you go. This is a, another kind of fantastic Warncliffe sort of thing going on here. Not the knife we're taking a look at, but yeah, still just uh, great. But this is what I wanted to uh, bring up with um, in uh, regards to uh, this is a, a much better uh, implementation of micarta. Uh, it is canvas in nature, which tons of micarta uh, industry-wide use. And uh, really don't have any problems with that. It really, to me, feels a lot like the uh, maybe the same supplier that um, Civivi and Sencut get their uh, micarta from. Just kind of has that same kind of a finish and um, uh, a thread count, I guess you would call it. I mean, I, I think that applies more to bed sheets than it does to micarta. But you can definitely see a certain uh, weave uh, tightness and all that sort of stuff. So I end up calling that thread count. But uh, there we go with uh, some of that. Yeah, we got some really, really nice ergonomics going on here. Super, super crazy drop shut action. We have a uh, detent ramp starts here and then ends about here. So that's one of those ones where if you do like to uh, drop that onto your thumb, yeah, you're over that uh, detent ramp afterwards. Really, really nice drop shut action here. Uh, we do have a little tiny bit of a uh, problem with a bit of a snaggle tooth up top here. Only really at the uh, the heel right behind the blade. And uh, still something that uh, I think probably has a little bit more to do just with the, uh, the blade stock thickness. If it was uh, 3.6 or uh, 3.5 or a little bit uh, thinner uh, overall, you're probably not going to be able to... Uh, get a finger in there enough for it. But something that uh, you might want to uh, remain cognizant about. Uh, I haven't had a trouble on this one like I had with, um, I think the uh, the Elegante actually uh, bit me when I uh, dropped it down when I was sitting on the couch and went and grabbed it and sliced my ass open. So, or my hand, my finger open, not my ass. Uh, my ass doesn't need to be anything open. What, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be, uh, it's neither here nor there. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on. Pocket clip, fantastic. Um, kind of has that slide uh, or a slant going on with it. Uh, really nice and wide contact patch. Uh, has a decent amount of flex to it. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be a, a full deep carry clip going on, but uh, that's perfectly fine. I don't particularly care. And it's um, nice and comfortable in the hand. Um, I can, you know, I'm cognizant that it exists, but that's it. It doesn't cause any hot spots for me in any of the, uh, the particular grips that, uh, I want to, uh, use the knife in. And this thing also feels super, super good in that, uh, reverse hammer grip in case you, uh, actually want to, uh, do a little bit of the, uh, the pokey pokey, uh, protect myself kind of stuff going on here. This one has a touch of, um, lock bar uh, access uh, a little bit more cut out on the uh, the show side than the other side here but it's not much uh still i don't really have uh, any troubles uh closing this guy up when I, when i want to but um that might change a little bit if your uh, thumb is a little bit um sweaty from uh, doing a lot of uh, work or possibly if you have some uh Gloves that don't have a whole lot of uh, traction on them. So, you know, the uh, lock bar axis probably could be just a little bit better. But still, not not something that I would say really makes or breaks the knife. We got uh, standard polished uh, uh, pivot colors going on here. Uh, not a call, uh, the, the call-out pivot color, so it doesn't have the uh, Tucson Yangjiang uh, province uh, information going on there. But it's still titanium, so in case you wanted to... Uh, Either match that with the uh, the rest of the anodization or have just a uh, 
kind of a uh, differing thing. You can also um, anodize that yourself if that's something that you uh, so choose to do. This thing uh, is basically a titanium bolster lock here, uh, which is what I'll end up calling it, um, which is essentially a frame lock. But um, because of the way that uh, these things end up working, um, bolster locks in general, I don't think really give you a whole lot of uh, extra strength over a standard liner lock because the way that um, they end up working is uh, they end up grounding down to uh, liner like thicknesses um, when they have uh, onlays or inlays or anything like that going on in there. So uh, they definitely look nice. They look probably a little bit stronger than a liner lock, but probably right around the same. Uh, that is to say, more lock strength than uh, you're probably going to need unless you actually want to use this thing like a hammer, in which case knife really isn't for you. You should probably <laughs> grab a different tool, but uh, there you go. Uh, and also, it doesn't bother me nearly as much as I thought it would, but the lanyard hole um, on the uh, the back spacer kind of sticking out of the back, maybe not my absolute favorite. Um, I understand kind of the the way that uh, the uh, the knife blade uh, interacts in there. They probably didn't have enough room to uh, dip some of that out and put a uh, post in there to uh, kind of hide that. But at least that uh, corner there doesn't really uh, dig into my hand at all. It's uh, kind of not really making much contact. And it, it kind of does there. But uh, the rest of the, the curvature really keeps that from, uh, from it making a pressure point or anything like that. So super great. I don't really have any complaints there. Um, what I do kind of have a little bit of a complaint with, though, is the pocket clip. It mounts directly onto uh, the uh, the canvas micarta with a uh, single point there. Um, like I had uh, shown last week with this guy, where it does have a uh, another internal post in there to have uh, basically uh, two uh, connection points, probably would help that out. This one doesn't have a huge amount of wiggle to it, and this micarta is a little bit stronger than their their older stuff, but still something that. Um, will probably be a concern over time um, and something that's uh, is just a little bit frustrating when that ends up happening and your pocket clip gets a little wiggly on you. Definitely not something you want to see. However, at least these guys are a little bit more affordable than a lot of other um, titanium frame lock and uh, bolster lock knives. So, you know, you can, I suppose, kind of uh, forgive them a little bit for that. But it uh, really depends on uh, kind of your uh, thought process on it. And, uh, yeah, it's just something that uh, I do wish that uh, Tucson themselves, if they do uh, receive um, any kind of um, models that have a, a single uh, contact point that's not onto uh, titanium or carbon fiber, even carbon fiber, I would still prefer at least a, a second, like, uh, internal pan or something like that, just to have two contact points. That way they're... Um, fighting with each other rather than um, actually having the uh, the micarta or the other scale uh, material um, actually add up to all that rigidity. So there we go. Um, I really, really like this knife, as you can probably tell from the tone of the, of the review. However, yeah, a couple of those things really do kind of um, have a little bit of the detriment there. Of course, the pocket clip thing, um, uh, just the... Uh, I would like a little bit more um, uh, lock bar clearance there. Uh, the plunge grind is okay. Um, you know, like I said, it ends basically right at there. But it could be just a little bit better. Um, and these uh, thumb studs kind of stick out a little bit too much like um, Alfred E. Newman's uh, ears, if you're familiar with the old Mad Magazines and stuff like that in uh, years past. So if the thumb studs were uh, shortened down a little bit, that would be great if we had a um, you know a secondary post um, in here for the uh, the pocket clip or something like that to uh, add a um, a second contact point there. That would be fantastic. And just for my own personal preference, if we could uh, figure out something to do to uh, keep that lanyard hole from uh, poking out there, but that's kind of the uh, the least of my worries. Then that would be an absolutely fantastic revision if they were going to do an up version of this. 
And for whatever particular reason, maybe it's the thumb studs there. This one kind of uh, reminds me, at least um, this whole area up top here, kind of reminds me of a frog. Uh, I, don't, I don't know necessarily why. Um, I've thought that of a, uh, a little tiny uh, Wong knife, too, that has some uh, funky thumb studs. But uh, still, very, very great ergonomics going on there. Um, they do a really good job with their D2, probably why they've stuck with it for so dang long. And, uh, yeah, I could, uh, highly suggest this knife if you can get over a couple of those, um, uh, kind of, uh, less than ideal, uh, situations that, uh, I explained just earlier. So, let's see. Yep, I'm all over the place. So, I covered the, uh, the blade stock thickness on here, the blade length on it. Uh, between the uh, little pointy bit and, uh, of course, the tip there is 3.59 inches. So definitely a larger knife. That's 91.3 millimeters. Um, as far as the uh, thickness of the uh, the handle scales, we got 0 0.55 of an inch. Uh, that's uh, 13.9 millimeters there. So nice and thin. Just a little tiny bit thinner than um, Spyderco PM2 here. And the weight of this guy. This is a titanium bolster lock. So we got 5.27 ounces or 149 grams. And a little bit of that has to do with the fact that they didn't really um, do any weight relieving uh, on the inside uh, of the, uh, the scales. That could probably take it down a little bit. However, they do have uh, inlays of micarta. So um, they really wouldn't be saving a whole lot of weight overall. Still, it's, it's just a heck of a... Uh, a lot of uh, metal in that blade that really adds a lot of the uh, the weight and everything. But there we go. There's the uh, standard review of the uh, the TS369. As far as I'm aware, this thing doesn't have a name associated with it. I could be wrong. Maybe if I'm uh, super, super lucky, uh, Jelly Jerry might uh, be able to uh, comment down below if he has any uh, uh, particular names for it, or if he's going to call me out for uh, anything that I got uh, incorrect or uh, doesn't agree with me with, I'm certainly welcome and open to any of that sort of stuff too. But uh, there we go. There's the uh, the TS369. Of course, we're going to go ahead and take a look on the inside of this guy. So if that's something that you're interested in, go ahead and stay tuned for the rest of y'all. Appreciate y'all for stopping by. So here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, pull the pocket clip off here poke that out and there we go yeah it has a, a large comp or a large um, kind of surface area there so we do have three surfaces for the uh, the micarta but still it uh, it could be a little more structurally sound with a uh, second contact point go ahead and move those guys over there and take this guy out. And hey, this guy's just going to come right off. We have just an absolutely little tiny bit of uh, weight relieving going on uh, there up in the bolster section on both sides. And of course, we do have an internal uh, blade stop pin, which uh, I did forget to uh, call out in the uh, the standard thing here. But uh, that's all right. So if you did want to uh, cut in a little bit more of a uh, choil or something like that over time, uh, because it does have that uh, internal pin there, um, nothing stopping you from actually doing that, uh, which I do appreciate quite a bit. And uh, yeah, we do have a, a single screw point um, for uh, keeping those micarta scales there. Of course, we also have the Chicago screw for another contact point, and of course the metal one there. So they're they're nice and um, snug in there. T6 for these guys. Uh, generally, I don't have that much of a problem if a, uh, if a knife is um, attaching uh, a scale onto, uh, or an inlaid scale onto uh, something, if it uses T6s. Still, T8s are probably preferable, but, you know, it's not something that really uh, gets my goat, if you will. This one, still quite a bit newer, so D-shaped pivot, but uh, it is on the uh, the show side, which makes that so much easier to be able to um, dial in and uh, put back together without uh, having all sorts of uh, difficulties realigning where that uh, pivot notch is when you're uh, putting things back together. But there we go. Of course, we do have the... Um, bearing races that are uh, 
buried inside there, in case I didn't really mention it. And we have a hardened steel insert. This doesn't act as a um, uh, over travel stop because we do have the uh, the micarta that will do that for you. So there's all of that. So we can go ahead and get both of those back together. Get that top scale back on there. Get that pivot color in and. Get that in there too. And of course, the first thing I want to do is close that so I don't have that blade sticking out and um, being all sorts of uh, dangerous towards me. Because, uh, well, I hope you, but I don't necessarily know about you personally. But I do like to keep my knives um, uh, maybe irresponsibly sharp. So, uh, you know, that's... They are safer that way, but still, if they're going to get you, they're going to get you good. So you definitely want to uh, have some good uh, knife protocol and etiquette and all that sort of stuff. But still, yeah, pivots might be just a touch tightened, but you could see that was still basically uh, drop shut. Yeah, still drop shut. No problems there whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, there we go. There is the, uh, the TS-369. Um, fantastic design that has just a couple of uh, little downfalls that uh, I would love to see for um, an improvement. Uh, maybe an up model if Tucson was going to do something like that. Or if he was going to uh, kind of uh, take this as a base and modify it for um, you know some of the other companies that uh, he ends up doing some designs for. Like uh, uh, Concept certainly comes to mind. He's done a couple there. Um, Man, I was going to say Kubi, but I honestly don't know exactly if he has or not done any work with them. So maybe not. And uh, there is a possibility um, of him releasing a knife through Mocenary. Um, maybe the uh, the MK11 or something like that. I don't remember exactly. It, they just have kind of a uh, drawing on their website for it. But uh, I don't know if any uh, full agreements or, uh, any kind of, uh, production dates or anything like that are there, but still, there we go. There's the TS-369. Uh, this is the purple variant. Uh, they also have it in green and, uh, yeah, I will, uh, let y'all get back to, uh, the rest of your day or, um, finding something else a little bit more interesting to, uh, watch here on YouTube. So, uh, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Hey, subscribe, please.